My name is Anusya Sengupta. I'm the co-director and co-founder of Who's Knowledge, a global multilingual campaign to center the knowledges of marginalized communities, in other words, the majority of the world, online. COVID has taught us many things. COVID has given us many brutal gifts. One in particular that stands out for me, the fact that a collective experience is not necessarily an experience that is the same for everyone. Whether you're old or you're young, whether you're black or you're brown, whether you're based in the global north, in London, for instance, or in Bengaluru, which is the city where my parents live, Depending on so many different factors, your experience of COVID is going to be different. And the internet is the same. So when we talk about access to digital infrastructure, to the internet in particular, what form of access are we talking about? Does access simply mean, can I get on the phone and find Google? Or does it mean that I might get on the phone, but I don't have good Wi-Fi signal or the electricity is off, so I can't test my laptop. Um, what does access mean? Access means different things to different people. It's not a simple on and off button. At the same time, access is much more than an on and off button, and it's much more than the technical infrastructures that allow us to be online. For us at Whose Knowledge, the questions that we ask are predominantly about what do we find once we're online? Whose knowledge is it online? You might be surprised to know that over 60% of the world is online, is digitally connected. Three fourths of those who are online are from the Global South that is from Asia, Africa, Latin America, the Caribbean and the Pacific Islands and the Middle East. And over 48% of all women are online. And yet the internet does not really look like me. It doesn't look like most of us in the world. Neither does published knowledge. So our friends at Google did an estimate a few years ago and found that, well, um, there have been over 130 million books published, most of them published in 480 languages. There are over 7,000 languages in the world. And yet published knowledge and online public knowledge are really only in about 500 languages. Even today, if you access content on the internet, digital content, most of that content is in English. If you try reading scholarly journals, most of that is in English. So what does it mean for the rest of us for whom English is not a first language, for whom uh, knowledge is not just about growing up in um, the UK, or even if we are growing up in the UK, we might look differently from our friends down the road. Our parents might come from a very different part of the world. And what stories do we tell about ourselves? What knowledges do we share about ourselves? How do we find ourselves? Do we even see ourselves in this great global digital infrastructure? If access means that getting on the internet is about seeing only one particular version of knowledge and one particular version of the world, that is not truly global, is it? That's the question we sit with. And therefore, we ask ourselves another set of questions to answer it, to respond. If we want to truly reimagine and redesign the internet to be for and from us all. How do we do this? How do we center the design, the leadership, and the imaginations of the majority of the world, whether that is as women, as black and brown folks, as indigenous communities, 
as LGBTQIA folks, as those from the global south? What does it look like to think about access as not just being the on and off button, but what we do when the light comes on 